The world is a blank canvas, just waiting for you and your imagination to fill it with colorful ideas. Let me share a secret recipe. Discover an ingredient that fires your imagination. Choose other flavors to match. Find the best way to cook them. My secret recipe? Cooking without a recipe. The best things in life and the kitchen all have to start somewhere. Because before you can create a masterpiece, first you need a blank canvas. Then you can add color. I love halibut's meaty nutrition and its relative blandness. It's a great flavor sponge. Hey, white food in general is just a masterpiece waiting to happen. There's a lot of goodness here, but let's just say it could use a flavorful color boost. There are a few great reasons to add color to food. For the eye, of course, but also for the body and for the palate. Because hey, colors look great and they taste great too. But in nature, colors are loaded with mother nature's best, which doesn't mean that white food is bad for you, but let's just say that halibut could use a little bit of a boost. And one of the best ways to do that is with some white paper. Colorful food every day is so good for you, like red peppers, yellow lemons, orange carrots, and green snow peas. It's time to brighten up this halibut's day. In essence, I'm gonna make a nice bed of colorful vegetables for that white halibut to nestle in. And of course, I could have picked any vegetables, but today, I'm looking for the colors of the rainbow. And then I'll steam the works together with that paper. Now the key to making this work is to cut the vegetables into tiny pieces that will cook through in the time it takes the fish to cook through. Now these green snow peas are tender and thin. They'll cook through very quickly, so they're ready to go. Now for the yellow, and I really do mean the yellow. I'm gonna zest that yellow color right into these veggies. And see what's left? A white lemon. All the flavor and goodness of that lemon skin is in those vegetables now. And now for the lemon juice, which is a little bit yellow too. There we go and some salt and pepper, because flavor is black and white too. Maybe a little splash of olive oil in there too, just for a little bit of richness. Red, green, and orange vegetables, and yellow flavor. Now it's time for some white. Okay. I'm gonna create a perfect little package for the veggies and for the fish, and then I'm going to steam everything together inside the paper. It's actually very easy to do. Start by cutting a great big heart, just like this. I love this method. Here's how it works. It's really very simple. I'll take a little pile of those seasoned vegetables and put them right here across the center of the heart because basically you're forming a bed for the white halibut and then simply set that beautiful piece of pristine white halibut right on top, which could use a little black and white too. There we go. Then wrap this all up into a nice neat package. Here's how you do it. Fold it over, then start rolling from the V of the heart, just like this. As tightly as you can, fold the paper back onto itself, and I'm using parchment paper, which is paper that can handle the heat of an oven. Folding it very, very tightly so that all the moisture, all the steam, all the flavor stays inside the package. Now chances are when you're done rolling, you'll be left with a little tail like this. 
No problem. Simply fold it under, and there it is. A package of color and flavor ready to head for the oven. Paper baked halibut. And as you're getting the hang of this method, the best thing to do is cut your heart big. Because hey, a big heart in the kitchen is always helpful. These are ready to head for the oven later. Boy, all this colorful fish wrapping's got me all fired up for a snack. But this time, I think I'll wrap tuna fish in something edible. Rice paper. First, it needs to be soaked. Okay, let's brighten this tuna up. Just a spoonful or so of mustard. And instead of mayonnaise, I actually prefer nice rich olive oil. And of course, some salt and pepper. Some bright lemon flavor. Now this green onion should jazz things up a notch. It's time to wrap and roll. Now when you're working with rice paper rolls, it's always a good idea to dry them off before you roll them up. Now for this pickle. Now you make a nice tight pile just like that. Don't take it all the way to the edges. And as soon as you make your first turn, which you're doing as tightly as you possibly can, start to fold in the edges. And then continue rolling nice and tight. Now the beautiful thing about rice paper rolls is that as soon as it's rolled, it sticks together like glue. Mmm, very nice. Tart lemon, tart pickle, green cilantro, green onion. Tastes pretty colorful. But what about the rest of dinner? beach with your family is a wonderful way to have a colorful good time. Because life is just a blank canvas until you paint it with color and fill it with flavor. Which is true in the kitchen too, because color is one of the ways that Mother Nature shows off her best. Which is why our dinner, some pristine white halibut, is resting comfortably with some colorful veggies and flavors. I've rolled them into a paper package, and I'll toss them in the oven a little later. You know, I think of white ingredients like onions and cauliflower as a blank canvas eager to be painted with color and flavor. But that doesn't mean you have to add other ingredients. Because sometimes that potential is hidden within the key my favorite cooking method, caramelization. By simply roasting this cauliflower and onion together, not only will I change their color, but I'll deepen their flavor too. So let's get roasting. Here's how to trim up a cauliflower. Simply flip it over, and then start working your knife right around that tough woody core. Then take a look inside and continue trimming until those beautiful florets just start to fall away. Just like that. And of course, it won't hurt to have an onion along for the ride either. Now to really get things jumping in this pan, I'm going to add a touch of olive oil. The oil will really help the cauliflower and onion caramelize. And now some black and white flavor. Salt and pepper. So take a moment and sort of mix everything together before you head these into the oven which will give the cauliflower a chance to soak up all that flavorful oil. 
Now, if you're looking for golden brown in your oven, the best place to find it is on the dial. Set your oven somewhere between 350 and 375, and you'll find that magic sweet spot, guaranteed gold. But that's no reason to stop looking for color. Now, if your kitchen's anything like mine, it's probably already full of bright color. And of course, the brighter the better, because hey, that's Mother Nature trying to tell us something. Mother Nature is a cook's best friend. She packs an incredible variety of nutrients from the phytochemical family into fruits and vegetables. These bioactive compounds combine with the vitamins, minerals, and fiber in fruits and vegetables to keep your family in peak condition. That's why nutritionists love fruits and veggies. But what I find most fascinating is that all those healthy phytochemicals are largely concentrated in the color of the produce. In fact, the deeper and the darker the color, the riper it gets, the better it is for you. Red, orange, yellow, green, purple, think color. Because one of the single best things you can do for your family is fill your cart with color and lots of it. Hey, Michael. Hey, Dave. Now that's a nice looking cart. Now here's something I've been meaning to try. Since tomatoes are a fruit, and since with fruit you can make a great crisp, why not make a cherry tomato crisp? I guess the trick is how to make it savory. I'll simply toss in some onion and garlic, and there's no way this will end up tasting like a dessert. This is gonna work just fine. Red tomatoes, red onions, and garlic. Some flavors just go together naturally. Now there's no way anybody's gonna think that's dessert. And instead of cream, I'll use olive oil, of course. And not a little bit of olive oil, a lot of olive oil. That should do. And of course, some salt and pepper. Of course, those are gonna shrink down quite a bit. And you know, a good fruit crisp has two basic parts. The fruit, of course, and the crisp. Okay, I'll just tear this into nice, small, rustic, handmade pieces. Who says you have to use a knife for everything in the kitchen? It looks like it could use just a touch more olive oil. Bread is such an olive oil sponge. It's probably why this is gonna taste so good. There we go. Now, I guess I'll just pop this on here. That should do it. There's just something about Parmesan cheese. It just goes naturally with tomatoes and garlic and onion. Somehow I get the feeling I'm gonna be making this again someday. I'm starting to look pretty colorful in there. Sometimes the best things in life start with a blank canvas, like a day at the beach with your family. Cheers! Because everywhere you look, there's colorful opportunity in life and the kitchen. Our dinner tonight began with a piece of pure white halibut. Then some colorful friends dropped by to entice the eye and tempt the palate. Turns out Mother Nature's at her best when she's ripe and ready, like a cherry tomato crisp or a head of cauliflower turning into gold. This will make an excellent side dish. But you don't have to stop here because there's another way to add even more color to this cauliflower. 
turn it into a soup with orange juice. Now a soup is one of the best blank canvases in any kitchen because you can stir into it just about any flavor or color that you can imagine. Now that cauliflower is already cooked, so this is going to be a quick soup. And that orange juice added a lot of color, but you know what? This could use a bit of body too, and for that I have the perfect ingredient. Chicken broth. But not just any chicken broth, colorful roast chicken broth. Chicken broth is a true blank canvas. Its neutral flavor is the perfect base for just about any sauce or soup. But for even more flexible flavor strength, use chicken wings and try roasting them first. Chicken wings are full of rich, meaty body, especially when they're roasted at 375 degrees until they're golden brown. Then, simply toss the works into a pot, but be sure to scrape out any flavor bits left in the pan. Add carrots, onions, and celery, and cover with cool, clear water. And throw in some aromatic herbs like bay leaf or thyme. And in just another hour or so, your pot at the end of the flavor rainbow will be full of golden broth. The general rule of thumb when you're making a soup is to have roughly equal parts liquid and everything else. You know, when I was a young line cook, I quickly figured out that if I needed to add a little bit of color to something, that all I needed to do was make a simple red pepper puree. This is the kind of thing that every line cook in every restaurant knows how to make when they have to add color in a hurry. I'll simply pull these seeds out. This will make a great garnish for that soup, especially with a touch of tomato juice to help soften up those red peppers. They'll need a little bit of salt and pepper too. And of course, this is entirely optional. You don't need a red pepper puree to make a beautiful cauliflower soup. Oh, you know what? A splash of olive oil for a little richness too. There we go. And now all I have to do is just heat that up, bring it to a simmer. When the peppers are soft, I'll puree it and I'll have a beautiful red splash of garnet. You'll know they're done when they get nice and soft, but don't mix them into the cauliflower yet. We want to keep these flavors and colors distinct. That's starting to look like a soup. Now, to jack up that roast cauliflower soup, I've got a perfect ingredient. Some bright yellow curry powder. Here we go. Now that's what I call a colorful soup of the day orange curried cauliflower, which is going to look great with this red pepper puree. I think it's time to fire that fish. Well, it sure has been a colorful day in the kitchen. A palette of simple ingredients have added lots of bright color, lots of nutritious color, and perhaps most importantly, lots of tasty color too. Check this out. Orange curry cauliflower soup. It's time to meet the red pepper puree. Very cool. 
This soup sure looks good. I know it's gonna taste good too. And now for the real star of this colorful show, some plain white halibut. But it's not looking so plain anymore because now it's paper baked halibut. Now here's how you serve this up. Simply grab a pair of scissors and just cut right into it. And look at all that steam coming out of there. Lots and lots of flavor. Just look at all that bright, tasty, wholesome color. This is ready for prime time, but not until I have a taste. Hey, you really can taste color. You know, the best things in life always begin with a blank canvas. Try painting with an adventuresome brush and your kitchen will quickly fill with the goodness of bright, flavorful color. Guess what this is? What? It's called orange curry cauliflower soup. Mmm. How about some cherry tomato crisp? That's really good. Oh, I will definitely make that again. Mm. What about the halibut? Does it taste colorful? That's a really neat idea. So how long did you have to cook this halibut? Oh, it took about 12 to 15 minutes or so mm -hmm. in a 400 degree oven. Let's just say there was a rainbow in the kitchen today. <laughs>